teacups, what's brewing? Check me out, reacting on a weeknight. I haven't lost it at all. I'm young, I'm free, I'm a week and a half from the winter holiday. You guys, as I take a sip of coffee at this, nearly 9 p.m., I slept last night. I haven't slept well for about a week and a half. Um, I've been getting like less than four hours sleep a night. And uh, the night before last, I slept for an hour and I got to the end of the school day and I barely walked home. Like I was just, my brain was buzzing, but I gave in the report cards. Uh, well, technically we're still doing checks, they're due tomorrow, but done the most of the work for them and uh, some of the other things. And I got home at about 3.40. I was in bed by 4 p.m. <laughs> I meant it to be a nap. I woke up slightly disorientated at like 8, 28, 30. Didn't get out of bed. Well, no, that's a lie. I went and turned the lights off and just locked the door and stuff. Um, Fussed around on my phone for about an hour. Fell back asleep. Woke up at 6 o'clock this morning. I didn't sleep. I went into a coma. But it was amazing. And the whole day, like, the scales have fallen from my eyes. My crops are watered. Like, it's been amazing. So we're here. Now, unfortunately, it does mean... Usually when I sleep really well, the next day I do not sleep. So, um, cheers. We're back with Foodie. Foodie went on a podcast and got her ass handed to her. <laughs> like, on a platter with a sprig of holly. It was also kind of ridiculous that she expected anything else. But anyway, we will get into that. So, she's come back to us with the video, Why I Won't Audition for, is it Lolka Live? I haven't seen that podcast before, by the way. I've heard it mentioned kind of around the community, but I've never actually watched it myself. So, Foodie was like us to know, having been hung, drawn and quartered on that live, uh, she definitely didn't want to audition for um, the connecting spin-off show. And it all smells very much of yesterday's match boost and nobody offered, but let's move on. So let's get into what Foodie has to say. Let's also remember to record the screen. Well, hello guys, welcome hello. back. Ooh, filters are filtering, her eye color has changed again. To another video. So, um, I was on Lol Cow Live panel yesterday. You were. you were indeed. And I thought I would talk about that. But here's a brief clip from me being on the panel. I like it because you know what? But you'll have to probably give her a few bucks for her her job wardrobe fund. So if you got a few extra no, bucks, I got my own. I'm a boss, man. I can afford my own wardrobe. I think it could work. I think it could work. Listen, well, I, I mean, at least it. Just... It's a lot of people talking at once. It's got to be hard to balance those kinds of personalities. Uh, it was quite overwhelming at times. She chose that clip presumably because she, look guys she can definitely laugh at herself and she can definitely take it but it was by no means one of the worst clips so i wanted to talk a bit about that so lol cow live is a live show uh mm -hmm. consisting of panel of lol cows um in the lol cow live show it has boogie 2988 and uh wings of redemption and um she has no new viewers. Most people do not need this explained. Even me, who doesn't watch Lolka Live, would know enough at this point that this is unnecessary. Keemstar is the host and owner of the show. He's the mastermind behind everything. Um, now, Keemstar is a very smart creator, very smart businessman. I find it really funny <laughs> that she is like, She's trying to be so careful as she talks about this. And I don't think it's because she's like, oh no, I don't rage anymore, which she will get into. But she is really nervous that they're going to take offense <laughs> because as we can see, she cannot hold her own. And he uh, is planning on making a whole bunch of shows. Um, he's, uh, his most recent project is Lol Cow Queens, which would consist of a similar show to the Lol Cow Live, but it would uh, have an all-female panel. And I guess, you know, one of those members uh, confirmed for sure is Tina D from The Kid Behind the Camera. I'm not really... I don't know any of those people. ...familiar with 
all that lore. Um, In fact, the only people I've heard of on the Lorca Live are Keemstar, because occasionally he got mentioned on Twitter, and Bougie, because I've just heard a couple of things around him, you know? And I think I saw him come on, like, a budgeting episode once that I used to watch. Now, I am a watcher of the show. I do enjoy putting on the Lorca Live. Yeah, she's mentioned them before. Um, with Wings, Boogie, and Keem, and um, the reason I like to do that is uh, I like their dynamic, their banter. I like, though, when they do what I've discovered, I guess. <laughs> now that she's discovered, she absolutely cannot hold her own to this uh, banter. <laughs> Recently, about what I like about the show is um, I like the more light-hearted uh, content when they're all you know, getting along and they're all doing something interesting, like when they went to the Halloween haunts, um, when Boogie's picking up trash by the road, um, you know, as a punishment. I, I like that kind of content. Um, what I don't really enjoy, I've noticed about the show, is I don't like the the back and forth, the, the just extreme hate, name-calling, chef. Excuse me if I'm wrong, because as I say, I don't watch the show. But that seemed to be what they were about, right? I mean, if everyone on there's a lol cow, they're kind of known for that. <laughs> they're not known for patiently waiting their turn and being reasonable. And if Chantal does watch this show, which she's already said she does, wouldn't she know that before she'd come online? Promoting the drama, that kind of thing. And, um... It just, it just kind of like brings me in like a negative space. And I guess it also just kind of reminds me of um, times where I'm angry and I let my anger get the better of me and I rage or how I used to rage really bad. And... Excuse you, how you used to? Uh, how's the uh, legal, the legal process that's going on behind the scene? How's that, how's that going? How are you in Yabba? Have you sent her a Christmas card? Have you sent a note of condolence to FFJ? What was it you called her mom? Uh, worm food? Yeah? No, 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 you don't get angry. And just be, be more that way. And um, so I'm gonna explain why I am not going to audition for the Law Cow Queen show. And I did get approached by somebody from their docket team. Very, very nice person, by the way, if you're watching. <laughs> Thank you so much for thinking about me and, you know... Thank you um, very much for thinking I'm a lol cow worthy of a podcast. <laughs> yeah, okay, no problem. <laughs> for, you know, those of you who thought that I would be a good fit for that show, yeah. I don't know if that's a compliment or not. You don't know? It's not. <laughs> Considering if you watch the show. It means you are a spotlight worthy mess. <laughs> Look, the show, it's meant to be a dumpster fire. That's what is the entertainment value of that show. It's Law Cow Live. No one has to explain that to us. We understand the meaning. So I find it very hilarious seeing in the comments all of my very, very, very dedicated haters. Why is that hilarious? If it's a Law Cow show, would they not be there? Would that not be the point? I see you. Oh, darling. Mwah. The Komodo dragon is soothed today. You know, it's the same one since I started my channel. All just really trying to ruin, all trying to ruin this opportunity for me. Any opportunity they can. Okay, I, I wasn't in the chat. I wasn't in the life. Whatever. I was comatose. <laughs> this is a show about lol cows. Infamous lol cows. Haters in the chat are not going to ruin that opportunity for you because ruined opportunities implies that people have bought information to people that don't know it, thereby making them think, oh, and stepping back. In this case, the whole point of that podcast is to embrace your mess. And therein lies the rub because this was a podcast entirely designed by people like her, for people like her, based on people like her. And she still absolutely blew it she could not handle it and god that has to sting you are the mess of messes your dumpster fire burneth too bright and they don't realize that they're just promoting me more like the more messy you make me seem the more outlandish you make me seem 
the harder you'll fail when you get on a podcast, apparently. Show us that success, darling. Take the hatred and ride it to the money. Other people online have done it. What are you doing? The more that that's going to peak interest for the show, there are people the on the show, show I mean, you. like, we faked cancer before. I mean, it's not a show of virtuous people. That's not the point. It's not the point. Again, you don't need to explain this to us. We weren't confused as to why you were on there. I'm confused as to why she thought she could survive on there. But actually, that's really a lie which we'll get into because she's always had a view of herself that does not reflect reality. You know, I mean, he has redeemed himself, whatever. Excuse me? He's done his punishment, but... I'm sorry. Is there redemption for faking cancer? Tell me. Tell me what it is because I don't... I don't think there's redemption for that. My point is, if you're looking for a panel of angels, you're not going to find it on Lolcow. Go to the mirror, climb through it, transport yourself back to half an hour before that podcast and tell this to yourself because you were the only one surprised by that. And if you did have very virtuous people on there, people would be bored and not watch. And that's a fact, okay? Is so, someone arguing um, with her, other than the 12 voices in her head? And Keemstar's smart, and he knows this. So so it's it's basically like a Jerry Springer of YouTube, kind of. Maybe worse. <laughs> so um, I had to decline um, politely um, auditioning for any any spot on any of the show. Okay, so she's saying she full out declined. Given how badly it went for her, she ran away. Okay, fair enough. She realized she could not handle it. I went up last night and honestly, I kind of regret it because, um, and I'm not crapping on the show at all. It's the show. It, she is so scared that Kim Scar's going to come for her. <laughs> is what it is. And, um, I knew that. So it's, it's totally, it's a what? it was totally my decision to go up okay, and, so. um, you know, it just made me feel <clears throat> Like, I'm going against principles that I'm trying to live by. Bullshit. Oh, Jesus. There are a thousand reasons you could give for not going back. All of them quite obvious. But because I'm just too pious, get out of here. Um, hashing up old stuff about my life that happened three years ago. Um, three years isn't that old. But the only reason it matters in any sense of the word is because you haven't changed. And I know she's about to do this big song and dance about how she's trying to, but if it were no longer relevant, it would be forgotten. You are still a terrible person in a number of ways, but you never truly change. So everything that's been is still relevant because it's based on behaviors you still do. I'm not that person anymore. I don't do OF content. I would never anymore. Okay, um, but you spent that live stream speaking in a very different way than you're speaking now. And that was Foodie trying to keep up. Because here's the thing I think she thought was going to happen. I think she was ready to embrace that Lolcal Live is showcasing the dumpster fire. Yeah, she was okay with that. And I'm going to talk about it, but I don't think that actually would have been that bad for her, practically speaking. But she thinks of this the way she thinks of TV stereotype uh, clicks in high school. She thought she was going to be one of them. So yes, we're all messes, but yeah, let's all get together and talk about it. She thought it was going to be kind of a messy sibling relationship more than just a full-on attack that she got the moment she got online. You do not know them that way. They do not owe that to you. But I think some part of her brain was like, once I'm in, I'm one of them, and then it's us against everybody else. So really, instead of me facing it alone, it will be kind of cool looks I'll be part of a group, and there's a protective nature of that. Practically speaking, also, if she went onto one of these things, there would be some kind of contract, there'd be some kind of payment, and it would mean that it would hopefully, for her, divert some more attention to her channel where she could also make more money. And those things are not bad ideas. With the way her views have been going, with the fact that it's been very difficult for her to get the kind of numbers, not even she used to get, but you, you look over the last, what, three weeks, month, and she has had such low views. I put something on Twitter the other day 
And I was just like, wow, she, this has been up for however many hours and it hadn't broken 5K. And I think actually this one, it's been up for a while now and I think it's on about six or seven. Like she's having real trouble breaking 10K recently. So practically speaking, having a regular gig, even if it labels you as a lol cow, which you already are, having a regular gig that brought in some income and in her brain gave a kind of a group of people who at the very least had come from the same kind of internet presence as her in the sense of them being lol cows herself and maybe understanding why she hates everybody and maybe supporting her. She thought that the lol cow live was going to end up being her hug box, that she could ride their coattails, which is something she hates when people do to her. But she thought she could borrow some of that clout and kind of get herself back on the up and up. Practically speaking, not a bad plan. The best offer she's had in a while, certainly, and at least she'd be getting probably some regular income out of it. The podcast wasn't on her channel. She didn't make money from it. But the problem, as ever, is her, is is the way she views herself. She's very narcissistic that way. And putting herself in that position just punches the self-image she has. She wasn't expecting to be the bottom of that heap. She wasn't expecting to be shouted at. She wasn't expecting to have answers demanded of her. She thought she'd go on. You'd be like, no, these haters are terrible. They're all unfair. It's all lies. And she just kind of get a pat on the head a little bit, maybe a little bit of ribbing, but nothing serious. And the moment she went on there, all of her pious morals out of the window because she wanted to score a point and she's not very good at that. Like, this is one of the reasons she's a terrible reactor because to be a reactor, you have to have to a point a sense of humor. Even though I stay fairly calm and I'm fairly analytical, I've got a sense of humor. I can laugh at things. And part of having a sense of humor is being able to laugh at yourself when you're being a bit ridiculous. Foodie doesn't have that lever and it shows. And if it's getting personal, people are just going to attack that weakness. And she is fundamentally weak in an emotional sense. You know, whatever happened with in my relationship, we've been moving on from that. I, I just don't want, you know, stupid things like accusations uh, from years and years ago that are just like it's totally irrelevant now. Yeah, it's irrelevant because you don't want to deal with them. And you'd rather push those under the rug than face that your behaviours might not be that different. Um, I have no no interest in, you know, screaming back and forth to, to dr- generate views. I'm sorry. What do you call your live streams? What have you been doing with FFG and with Yabba and with Gorlick Bread? And not as much recently, but Breezy. Like, you don't want to rage. Pull the other one. I, I, it's just not something I'm very interested in anymore in life, I guess. I'm, uh, you know, I think yesterday me being in that environment kind of confirmed it for me. Um, You're not interested in answering to it. That's the difference. In your channel, you can say anything you want and then you can delete it or you can block people. You are in control of that. You're not in control of what comes out of your mouth, but you're in control with what happens with it after if you decide you want to erase it. That podcast stays up. You've got no control over it. I am trying to, like, say my opinion without being a total sounding snobby because I'm not. Why would you be snobby? You don't have anything in your life to be snobby about. How is this beneath you? I don't want to just partake in that kind of content for views or money. She does it on the community tab for free. You know, I thought it would be fun, a fun opportunity because, you know, I saw the dynamic that the Lolcal live cast have together and it looks fun. It looks like they've developed a friendship, you know, and, and they have fun doing it. So for me, I wasn't really just thinking, you know, of money potential. I was thinking of... She was 100% thinking of money and I'm not against that. I think if she were to think of the money and actually go through with it, it would be one of the smartest financial decisions she's made in a while because it has the impact of giving her a guaranteed regular paycheck and potentially boosting the one she earns herself. More of like networking, like building friendships and stuff, but I don't think that that's the type of content that Lolcal Queens will be. Okay. Networking and building friendships when it comes to the internet, I believe, are two separate things. One can lead to the other, but um, not in this case, let's say. I I don't really just want to 
you know, be screamed at and yelled at all day and night uh, or for a few hours or whatever. It's just not something all day and night and then call herself (laughs) thing that I find pleasurable and um I again I don't want to like dredge up my past for entertainment as well okay I mean you do it enough anyway but what did you think was gonna happen as a viewer of the show knowing what you were stepping into what did you think they were just going to ignore it all and be like, here is Chantal, who's got a completely clean history. It's definitely not a lol cow, but we thought we'd, you know, sign her up for no reason. We've got nothing to talk about in regards to her history. You were there to be milked. Um, of course, people are probably still going <laughs> to ruminate over it, talk about it, um, rewatch all the old stuff. That's fine. That's that's fine. She's begging you to. She'd really like the money. Except, oh, she deleted half of her channel when she got to Kuwait. So the only people who have the copies that people we rewatch will be reactors. Oops. <laughs> it's totally fine. That's not who I am anymore. And whether you think that I'm wearing a costume or not is, you know, it's. I'm, that was a weird cut. I'm not here to convince people anymore, my, especially haters. Yeah, you are unconvincing on your best day. You know why? Because you might not be walking around naked anymore, but none of your other behaviours have changed. You're now covered. All of your behaviours are the same. You still rage. You still talk about inappropriate things online. You still neglect your cats. You still live in filth, mostly. Although I will give it to her that it's not as bad as it was when she was in the villa, based on what we see anyway. You still have the thinnest skin imaginable for somebody who's been on the internet this long, and you're still managing to repeat all your mistakes while learning nothing from them. You're following the same patterns, you're just doing it cheaper. Of, of anything, I don't, I, you know, I'm just here to live my life and that's it. Like, I, I'm just, that's totally up to you what you think of me. That's not my business anymore, basically. Okay, then I'll continue to think of you as I ever have. You know, I am a Muslim revert and I haven't been acting um, accordingly. Like, not at all. Like, especially being on that show. Okay, so let's take the show out of the out of the picture for a minute. Let's just put a pin in that and come back to it. When have you been acting like a Muslim at any point? Let's look in the last month. No? Last two months? When was she in Thailand shitting herself on camera? Three months? When was the last time you acted like a Muslim? And there are a huge range of people. There's a multitude of different ways with which to follow this religion. Tell you what, let's start more basic. Tell me what the Quran says about how you should act. Because you've been on this journey. You said your Shahada, what, two years ago? Have you made it past the first page? Because you might not be a perfect Muslim, but I'm going to presume in two years you could read a book. I know the answer's no. I'm not even saying she needs to follow any of it. I'm saying at least, at least pretend, at least read it. We've gone through before the things she hasn't done that you would expect of a Muslim revert. Even if we were to take away all of the inappropriate behavior online, what do you do? And and engaging in negativity, acknowledging haters, acknowledging... (laughs) Sorry for the cock, I sneezed. Negativity, retaliating against haters. um... Okay, what was your excuse before the show? Because that's been happening a while. Speaking of behaviors that haven't changed swearing way too much just doing a lot of things that are just against principles that I'm trying that are against principles that I'm trying to follow now in life so that's the main reasons that you know I don't feel that this show is the right fit for me anymore maybe if it was foodie beauty from three years ago then maybe if it was foodie beauty from three hours ago The reason she finds it so difficult to have what she terms wholesome content is because she's not a wholesome person. All the things that people have on these lovely, cozy channels, Chantel doesn't do. And that's why it's so hard for her to fake it. Yeah, more than likely, that would be totally fine. But it's just not something that I feel fits 
the direction of life I'm seeking to go forward in. So, um, good luck to me because I have to, you know, um, it's, it's a, an onward journey. It's not easy. It's okay, foodie. You're patient like a Komodo dragon. It's not easy trying to become a better person, but, um, my camera clicked over to the new file. I didn't trust it after last time. I turned it off to check that it was definitely recording, looked down and realized that my screen recording had switched itself off. Why is my computer working against me? Luckily, I think I've only lost like the last three minutes. I checked the other recording and it went up to about 11. So here we are. It's not easy trying to become a better person. It's easier if you try. You know the one good thing about joining a religion the way you claim to have done? They have guidance on that. They say, okay, to us, this is what a picture of a good person looks like. These are the values we would like you to take forward. And you can use that. How is the study of the Quran going? You're not a perfect Muslim. Nobody is. But it's been two years. Have you read the book? The main book. But, um, I know in my heart what I want to do. And I just have to put the intention in there. I have to put the work in there. And that's what I want to focus on. I, you know, I want my channel to be super boring. Be more wholesome. Like, I, even the beesing, I, I want to wholesome bees. I want to... Okay, okay. Here's the thing. I like wholesome content. I actually do. I made this recommendation over on my members channel, but I watched this guy called Rewilding Jude and he's just bought this um, house in rural Scotland and oh, I love it. Anytime I'm having a bit of a stressful day, it calms me right down. She has a genuine hatred of anything that might be considered wholesome, right? Or even just like cozy. She, have you ever heard her talk about crafts? She hates them. I would actually love craft content from her just to watch her lose her mind over it that should be her new series foodie tries crafts one episode every week where she tries something new and hates it but the aim should never be boring content it is unfortunately a side effect of her being her because she's got no other interests the easiest way to see how small her life has become is watch her try to think of anything to talk about while eating but if you want to do other content, do it. What's it going to look like? I just have lighthearted fun. I don't want to have negativity and hate because um, honestly, it's just not worth the mental health. Um, You're right. It's not. But the reason she has so much hatred around her is because she has so much hatred within her. Why is the sea blue? Because it reflects the sky. Why is the sky blue? Because it reflects the sea. So that's why I don't feel like I would be a good fit. Like upon further thought, I was... I think she'd be an amazing fit. I think she'd hate every second of it. She wouldn't be in control and she doesn't have the quickness required of reacting to a situation, which is why I say she's a terrible reactor when she tries to react to us because she just doesn't have that. We know from her general historical tales that she was not massively popular in high school, that she had some, she had a car, so there was always places she could go because people wanted to go, which was probably the smartest thing she did for herself socially, but she doesn't seem to have been that well liked. And from everything we know, she was a bit of a mean girl or she wanted to be a bit of a mean girl if she had been more popular, maybe. She wanted to be one of the crowd. She wanted to be in the group. And that's not what happened and it's not what would happen because she wouldn't be able to just twist what had happened into something new the way she can when she controls the audience because they'd be like, bitch, that's not right. That's not what happened. It's impulsive when they asked me to come on the show. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, like a little bit starstruck because, you know, Kim has um, a lot of clout yeah. and he... And you thought you'd be a cloud chaser. And that's like... She works in social media. She's a content creator. She was hoping to get something going with some bigger creators and to benefit from it. That's actually a really normal thing. And like I say, with so many of the avenues closing to her around ways that people make money online, 
would have been one of the few places she could have grown into. She doesn't have the control for it to just be business. She doesn't have the control to say, okay, I'm going to have to take it on the chin, but look, these are the benefits. She can't play that game. He's famous on the YouTube streets, and I thought, you know, I'm labeled as a law cow. Because you are one. Um, I felt like if there's anybody that should be on a law cow show, especially with women, it should be me. I'm a law cow. I'm one of the biggest ones, right? <laughs> I love that. Because it shows the confidence, the misplaced confidence, the arrogance, and the narcissism that it that is inherent to most of the lol cows out there. That attitude right there. <laughs> so, but I realize that I'm not really... I swear to God if she says she's not really a lol cow. Like, I'm not like I was before. I haven't done any of those um, shady behavior things in years. And Excuse me? You haven't done any of those shitty behaviors in years. Is that what I just heard? Is that what you just told me? You have done shitty behavior. Literally, you have done shitty behavior. Not metaphorically. And so has your husband. Again, literally, not metaphorically. You two do not live figuratively. Don't you sit there and tell me how different you are now. I have eyes, I have ears. I have memory longer than a goldfish. And, um... Oh, shit, that's all right. Rages, yeah, still raging against haters, yeah. I'm sorry, I don't know what the hell I'm doing with my computer. I've accidentally turned off the screen record twice while I was talking to you, and now it's gone super loud. Let me just go back a minute. That's what I get for doing this late night. I just get exhausted and do stupid things. Rages, yeah. Still raging against haters, yeah. But that's, again, I'm really trying to just challenge myself and just uh, let them talk to themselves. Okay, how's the lawsuit going? Because not only does she not challenge herself, not only does she not let them go, she rants on the community tab. For free. She doesn't even do it in videos all the time. So, um, I really want to just, like, focus on lighthearted, fun content. Um, Give it to know, me. So, um... What do you consider lighthearted and fun? I'd love to know. That's all I want to do. So, you know, nothing personal against the show. I'm sure they won't even care. They <laughs> won't. Um, <laughs> they won't miss me. No. But... No, they will. They will. Forevermore, there will be an empty square within their show. In memoriam, foodie beauty, 2024 to 2024. Yeah, I just, it's not something, I don't want to like live in my past and rehash everything and give attention to things that people just want to use to bring me down. Okay, may I suggest therapy then? To try to bring me down. Um, to try, you're already loved. It's just not what I want to do. So, okay. Um, yeah, I want to continue to try and work on making my content boring, <laughs> bettering myself, and um, living my life with my, you know, happy little family and um, my neglected cat, my terrified hamster, and my scat loving husband. The perfect family. <laughs> you know, my life is not perfect, it never will be. And, like I always say, um, that's fine. I'm reading Pleasing God, Not Haters. I, I don't think she's really doing either of those things. I don't mind my speckled axe. I'm happy with what I have. I'm happy with, you, you know, the, the positive Beezers I have in my life. Who are they exactly? I have my Beezer army, even if it's not as big as Hater army, that's fine. She used to have a Beezer army. You could probably name five or six of the big names in her chat. That would literally be it. She's barely got a Beezer circle at this point. Um, for me, it's, you know, quality over quantity. I don't... She has neither quantity nor quality. <laughs> you know, have people in my chat um, just saying, you know, B word, B word, see you next Tuesday. Um, I hope this person dies. They're disgusting. I hope they stroke out. Just like the nastiest crap, you know? Your mom's worm food. I don't care that she's dead. I've got no empathy for you. I'm glad you're living with that pain. That sound familiar? 
Should do. Should do. And cheering on someone's downfall and, and just being negative all the time. We just laugh and have a good time most of the time. And that most. I think you might be getting the balance of that wrong. That's what I want to continue to do. To do. So I appreciate you guys. I love my Beezers. And um, yeah. So anyway, I'll uh, see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye. Okay. I've got to figure out what a mess I've made of these recordings. I will cobble together something and you will see it in this video. Thank you so much for your time. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.